right, so all will see your worth. I wanna go where you leave me and let the world know what you have done. I've got my jet pack on and I'm ready to go. Into the darkest corners of the world. I will shine your light, so all will see your worth. Hello and welcome to our service on Sunday the 1st of November. My name is Hannah Gordon, I'm the curate here at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Carshorton Beaches. It's lovely to have you with us wherever you are watching this, however or with whoever you are watching this. Today is All Saints Day. It is the day that the Church remembers all of the saints who have gone before us. Some of those saints will be people who we meet in the Bible, people like St Peter and St Paul. Some of those will be people who have walked the path before us, people who have been saints in our own lives. Some of them may be people who you know really well. Some of them may be people whose writing has influenced you. I wonder if I asked you to write down the top five saints in your life, who would you write down? Last year on All Saints Day, I spent the day writing on Twitter, recording the people who have been saints in my life. People like my grandma, who was a women's royal auxiliary nurse in the war, who had a deep faith and who uh, who was a stern and, and stubborn and strong-minded woman. She died before I began exploring my vocation. She was a lifelong Roman Catholic, and I sometimes wonder whether she would be extremely pleased or utterly horrified at what I do now. I wonder who the saints are in your life, living or departed. And today we get to remember them all before God and remember also that we are all the saints. We are the great cloud of witnesses. We are the people who carry the good news. And so after we started our service so energetically with Jetpack, a song which is full of energy and silliness, but with a message that following Jesus is an adventure and we don't quite know where it's going to go. We are now going to pause and to say our opening prayer together. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We say our opening prayer. We meet in the name of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, God is one. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. on the clouds kings and kingdoms will bow down and every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise for who can stop the Lord oh 
Almighty. God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gates. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. So who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him.
we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our sadness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. We read from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, but they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless to us this reading from his holy word. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 9. Then I looked, and there was a great number of people, there were so many people that no one could count them. They were from every nation, tribe, people and language of the earth. They were all standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They wore white robes and had palm branches in their hands. They were shouting in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The elders and the four living things were there. All the angels were standing around them and the throne. The angels bowed down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. They were saying, Amen. Praise, glory, wisdom, thanks, honour, power and strength belong to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, Who are these people in white robes? Where did they come from? I answered, You know who they are, sir. And the elder said, these are the people who have come out of the great suffering. They have washed their robes with the blood of the Lamb. Now they are clean and white, and they are before the throne of God. They worship God night and day in his temple, and the one who sits on the throne will protect them. Those people will never be hungry again. They will never be thirsty again. The sun will not hurt them. No heat will burn them, for the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of water that give life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hello. Fancy seeing you there. That was me doing my best impression of Monty Don, accidentally being caught by surprise in the middle of a garden task. That was me mowing my leaves, which is, contrary to popular belief, a perfectly normal thing to do. But more about that later. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's a great way to launch a manifesto, isn't it? It would have reminded Matthew's original Jewish readers and Jesus' listeners of Psalm 1. Blessed are those who don't walk in the way of the wicked, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruits in season, whose leaf does not wither. Which itself is an echo of our church theme verse, Jeremiah 17, 8, when we get our church values of being rooted, growing and fruitful. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It never worries in a year of droughts and never fails to bear fruit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. I see it like this. I feel so lucky living on this street where we've lived for the last three years. I'd driven down this street for many years before that as we lived quite locally before. I've often marvelled at the beautiful beech trees that line this road, forming a green tunnel in the spring and summer and a beautiful golden brown tunnel in the autumn. The thing about leaves is you don't realise their significance until they're gone. This street is full of leaves all year round, except the winter, but you don't see them most of the time because they're up in the trees. Mostly we don't notice trees with leaves, they're just there, unless they drop sap on your car or aphid poo. But the leaves, we notice them when they fall, don't we? Thousands upon thousands of leaves that fall. And it makes me reflect on how the tree would die if the leaves didn't grow back and transform the energy from the sun into new growth. Leaves we don't notice until they fall. To me these fallen leaves can be a picture of the saints, those who have gone before us. We barely notice most of them most of the time but every autumn this time of year they cover our pavements and cars and remind us this tree is old. This tree has history. This tree is bigger than this year and this season and me living here. And the best thing about this picture is that when they fall, these leaves, though they die, they don't stop giving. Those leaves break down into the ground and become the nutrients that feed the trees for the next years. They revitalize the soil and feed the roots like the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, the great multitude in Revelation singing praise, glory, wisdom, honour, power and strength be to our God. Those are the saints that have gone before us. Now some of you will know I have a love for compost, I may have mentioned it before, and you may have seen me around the streets doing the perfectly normal thing of collecting leaves from other people's roads in order to, um, well, you know, mow them and compost them. For this reason, to harness the goodness of what has gone before to grow something in the present and the future. Those who have gone before us in the faith, those are what we call saints, not necessarily famous, big, well-known people, but those who have gone before us. They, they may not be here anymore. And some of those we mourn, and that grief may still be raw for some of us. But the saints who have gone before us, they can be our inspiration. They can provide nutrients for our growth, revitalise the soil in which we grow our roots. 
alongside this, of course, when we look back to our past, there are some leaves we shouldn't put in the compost. Diseased ones, for example. There are some aspects of church history that we are rightly ashamed of. The more we look at our spiritual heroes, the more flawed we see they are. Like, on the one hand, the Anglican communion around the world of which we are a part reminds us that we are just a small part of the worldwide church. It's not all about us. That's a good thing to remember. And yet also reminds us that much of that Anglican communion was formed initially from our colonial past and some of the methods that were used based on racism, misogyny, collusion with slavery. More recently, there's the horrific safeguarding problems the church has faced. We cannot ignore this about those who have gone before us. Nostalgia tends to rose tint the past. Wasn't it all great back then? Well, no, there are always good things, but there are also bad things. We cannot ignore this. That's not being authentic. We need to be authentic people. Abraham and Sarah were flawed human beings, and yet we revere them as heroes. Moses was flawed. David and Peter and Paul and Martha and Mother Teresa and Desmond Tutu, all flawed human beings. Everybody is flawed. The church, past and present, is flawed, and it will be in the future, no matter what we try to do. But, but as we honour the saints of the past and look up to those of the present, we seek to be people of humility, of justice, of loyal service, biblically based and authentic, that others might look up to us, the church, and see the face of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is why we prioritise children and young people and home groups and gathered worship, because that's where the energy from the sun is turned into growth. Combining my very distant memory of A-level biology, which I just passed, and theology, sanctification is photosynthesis. The Spirit's work in us, transforming us, growing us from bud to leaf to seed and into compost for the next generation. The Spirit's work transforming us is like photosynthesis that transforms into energy. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is drawing people towards him when we hear him giving what's called the Sermon on the Mount, which is probably more like a hillside. When we hear that, Jesus talks about the poor in the spirits, those who mourn, the humble, those desperate for justice, the merciful, the pure in hearts, the peacemakers, those prepared to suffer in Jesus' name. Now we might look at that list of characteristics of people groups and feel intimidated or ashamed or unworthy. Are, are we those things? Well, a couple of years ago in church, we wrote the names of those that we looked up to, be they famous Christians, saints, or people we sit next to in church every week. And we made paper aeroplanes of them. Do you remember? And we, we flew them around the church. And then we picked up other people's to read them and open them, see what was in them. And it was fascinating, there's a huge array of different answers from classics like Mother Teresa through to people that we sit next to in church every week. But I think an overriding theme was authentic faith that showed itself in character and in action, like those things listed in the Beatitudes, being poor in spirit, not arrogant, showing humility, not pride, a thirst for justice, not being satisfied with inequality. A challenge for us on All Saints Day is this. If we've been followers of Jesus a long time, we should be expecting by now to be an example to others, to be someone others look up to. Yeah, of course we're frail 
and flawed and a bit hopeless at times, but years of being honed and trained by the spirit of our leaves being exposed to the sun's rays and that photosynthesis occurring, so we turn bright green. We would surely hope that others might be able to see something in us they would like to emulate, they would like to see. The trouble is we, we think, oh my goodness, that's such a lot of pressure. I'm just an ordinary suburban uh, woman or man or teenager or whatever. What can I do that's extraordinary? We set ourselves unattainable goals and then let ourselves off the hook because we know we'd fail, so there's no point trying at all. Like deciding to run a marathon with no training. I can't beat Brigid Kuski's women's marathon record, therefore I won't run at all. I can't be Mother Teresa, therefore I won't try at all. But Mother Teresa didn't set out to be Mother Teresa the hero. She just humbly served God where she felt called. And by the way, from what I've heard, she had a flawed character. She wasn't always easy to work with. The best people aren't. The vast majority of Christian saints are unsung heroes, barely noticed beyond their own community, but they are the people who faithfully serve, who humbly seek after God, who wrestle with the big questions on whose shoulders we stand. So who are those people for you? For me, I remember the people who ran the youth groups at the churches I was at when I was young, probably forgotten me long ago, they saw so many, but uh, I remember sitting uh, in their living room with all the young people and just talking through life and having a giggle. I remember seeing students at university who set up a soup run uh, in Nottingham where I was because there was nothing at the time for people and I, I thought it was amazing that Christians would do this kind of thing. I remember the volunteers who served in the health centre for homeless people I worked in. I got paid to work there. They gave their own time up for free. And so many people in churches since who have just given their time selflessly just to make coffee, to visit the sick, to welcome the stranger, to remember the bereaved. You, know, you don't have to be a spiritual superhero. You don't have to be Brigid Koskai to take a friend out to start on a couch to 5K. In the same way, you don't have to be a famous spiritual great to be someone else's inspiration or, or prayer partner or supporter. These are the people in the reading in Revelation who are now with or will be with God, no longer to hunger or thirst, who will have streams of living water from whom God will wipe every tear. That's our hope that we will join them. It's not a vain hope but it's a sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Ordinary, faithful followers. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now I'm trying not to end this by saying, let's all be trees. We can take a metaphor too far. But what I do want to say is as we look back on those who have been rooted in Christ, growing in faith and fruitful in love. May we let their stories inspire and encourage us, inspire us to great leaps of faith and to small acts of hope, to inspire us that we also are one with the saints. So what we're gonna do is pray our rooted, growing, fruitful prayer together. And then we're going to sing as a prayer, the hymn for all the saints as we give thanks for those who have gone before us. Amen. Strengthen us, we pray, with power through your Spirit, that we may be a people who are rooted in Christ as we gather to worship, growing in faith as everyday disciples, and fruitful in love as we seek the well-being of our community. Amen.
let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Collect for All Saints Day God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age as we rejoice in the faith of your saints. Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to Community News. Community News this week is brought to you in association with the Auction of Promises. So I'm going to hand over to Anthony and Miranda who are going to explain how the Auction of Promises is going to work this year as we are unable to do our usual Christmas fair but we have some great ideas coming for other ways that we can raise money in our Christmas appeal. So Anthony and Miranda, over to you. Hello, we'd like to talk to you today about the Auction of Promises which normally would take place at the Christmas fair. But unfortunately, as you know, this of course is not happening uh, this year, but we would still like to do a virtual auction of promises. We are aware that some of the bids that you made last year are for events that haven't yet taken place, but they will be reorganised as soon as allowed. There are many things such as dinners, afternoon teas, um, other events that won't be possible to offer this year, but there are still many options. For example, wine, cakes, bread, meals to be delivered, mm -hmm. gardening, sewing, trip to the tip, walks, various offers of tuition, such as maths, PowerPoint, etc., although these would be online. Please do let us know if there's anything you would like to offer or if you have any requests so that we can still raise money for our charities. Thank you. Shortly, uh, we'll be putting up a page on the church website giving you more information on how you can be involved and guidelines on what we can and perhaps what we could avoid putting um, up as promises or requests. If you're on church suites, then you'll receive an email in the near future pointing you to this web page. Um, and if you're not, um, then please email the Auction of Promises team on the email address you'll see on the screen at the moment. Um, or simply call Miranda or myself. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And regarding the rest of Christmas, all will soon be revealed about what we're going to be doing for our Christmas services, which will obviously be very different this year. And also regarding our Christmas fundraising appeal, which replaces the Christmas fair for this year. Ideas have been forthcoming and we'll be revealing some more of those a bit later on as well. So watch this space regarding Christmas. Later on today, Sunday the 1st of November, we have our annual family memorial service called Hope Remembered. Uh, you will have received details about this already. Um, if you'd like to come, you do need to book, so please do that through Church Suites or send me an email. Look forward to seeing you there. I'm also pleased to tell you that we're going to be running soon a course called the Bereavement Journey. This is a long established course that we've never run it here, aimed at people who have been recently bereaved or bereaved a long time ago. Uh, where we learn to walk alongside each other and support each other through the bereavement journey. This will be held online initially. If you'd like more information about this, then please do get in touch with me or with Katrina. Now, last week I asked you for your tips on how you've sustained and strengthened your faith 
over the last few turbulent months. Well, I missed out on a few of them, and so here they are now. Uh, this is Michaela and the Months, which sounds a little bit like a 1970s folk band, uh, but here we go. Thank you. Take it away. Um, there are many things, really, that have sustained me over this uh, extraordinary time that we're going through. Uh, mostly it's been fellowship um, through the wonderful technology that we've been able to enjoy, but also through my music, uh, and uh, many fond memories of Spring Harvest and uh, the number of different songs of worship that uh, I've heard and played uh, with wonderful, meaningful words. And uh, then obviously nature itself that uh, seems to ignore all that is going on and continues to be its wonderful self that was created you know, in the spring and now the autumn. And um, if ever I've got any doubts at all or anxiety, then I sort of look at maybe what is my favourite psalm, which is Psalm 128. And just the very last verse is um, the Lord watches over me as I come and go, both now and forever. During lockdown, we've been very lucky that we've been able to join with our home group every Saturday morning um, and pray together, study together um, and just encourage each other. Um, we've also been looking at um, Psalms and exploring them more um, and it's been really good and we look forward to every Saturday. And finally, celebrating your birthday this week, a very happy birthday to Neve, G and to Jacob. Thank you. Even what the enemy means for evil 
God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love and setting us free from sin that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day, take our lives, give us your peace and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and those whom you pray for now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.